an explosive origin story. Rated out of 10 by the Mate Night Podcast. 3, 2, 1, go. 6.2. 3.0. <laughs> Generously. Wow. That's so low. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Where'd you go from there? What an atrocious <laughs> film. What, a, what an absolute pile of garbage from the start to the end. Oh, what a bad film. You know what? I was just, we, when you were prepping up there, we were trying to remember what the name of this was. Was it Fury? Because you kept referring to it as Mad Max. And I was like, I think yeah. it's Furiosa. So let's let's try and get that right. And when I checked, I looked and I, I caught the IMDb. Now, usually before any of these... I'll be like, I want the new ones. I mm. want to make sure I'm not getting affected by what other people have said. Like, yep. can, and I saw in the IMDb, although they do go down, it's currently at an 8.0. I saw that. Which is, Ridiculous. I was surprised by it. I was like, mm, have I misjudged here? That's why I'm like, I'm glad I wrote my It's a joke. Before. It's, I don't understand how it could possibly have an 8.0. It is a, it is a, like, at fractally, at every single level, it is an appealing film. 3.0, though. That that, is, no, this is a bad... It wasn't that bad. It was awful, Fred. It was so bad. I, was I spent the right. whole time like, what is this absolute garbage? Mm, okay. All right, let's, let's set up the film. Right, right let's set on, up the on. film. You set up. All okay. right, by the way, by the way, spoiler free for should you watch it. Spoiler so free. We will... We will endeavor to be completely spoiler free up until a point where we're going to clearly demarcate. spoiler free right okay so here's the premise of the film right Go on. you've got the mad max universe which sure. i have to the take mad with max a, exactly i have to take it with a pinch of salt because i don't know exactly what's going on i'm actually mm. quite excited to find out sure i know it's a bit crazy that's mm-hmm. it. post-apocalyptic fine Somehow, inexplicably, there's an oasis in the middle of the outback, right? The whole world is full. Like, even the most abundant places in the world can't sustain life. But somehow, right in the center of Australia, where no life can currently sustain, there happens to be this oasis. Right. Fine. Okay? (laughs) Right? They don't want to share it with the poor people, right? They don't want the the poverty-stricken, starving individuals to have any. So they just murder anyone that finds it. Sure. Again... Fine. We're introduced to Furiosa. 10 years old, something like that. Maybe. A brave 10 year old. She's out dangerously hunting for plums or something. (laughs) Yeah. And she gets kidnapped, right? Right. The story is set up where Furiosa is taken by these bandits who've discovered this oasis and they're going to find this oasis. And there's this really interesting dynamic where Mm. it's like, oh, Furiosa wants to go home. They want to find her home. How is she going to do it without them? finding it out Mm -hmm. i'll tell you how they do it they just forget about it for the whole film within Mm. like two scenes they just forget about it they just don't talk about it again Mm. like 10 minutes after he takes her that's it just gone the whole setup just wasted well okay i don't want to try and navigate any spoiler territory here but they do find other that they are on the search for the green place as it's called Uh And then he finds the main antagonist who ends up being quite involved with Furious. I mean, we can say played by Chris Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth's character in this is the main antagonist. And he ends up having, I don't know, a better offer, should you say? Like, although he wanted to find this green place, this place of abundance, they end up setting up shop. He works in in gas. Am I not? I don't know. Without without going into it, basically, like I, I don't. My biggest gripe isn't the fact that he kind of gives up on the idea of the green place. No, no, no. That's just one. That's just <laughs> one. That's just the fundamental plot. <laughs> right. Okay. This is this is just the fact that they seem to have set up a really cool idea and then just gave up on it. Okay. All right. Well, fair enough. And we could argue all day on the the intricacies of the plot, which are a bit odd. That is. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. <laughs> turn my voice down. Turn, turn, <laughs> turn, 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 let me tell you. Let me tell you <laughs> that if you're deciding to watch any of the Mad Max films for the plot, based on my research this week, don't bother. You're there for the spectacle. Now, what did you think then? Let's say plot was out of it. Yeah, which it was atrocious. You, plot, okay. God awful. Plot, terrible not plot. Plot, plot is one element. Yeah, of, that makes up a film. Yeah, I agree. You've I given agree. it a three. Now, yeah. even with a really bad film. Yeah. And I wasn't the biggest fan of the plot. Yeah. 
What, what, um, did you not enjoy any of the action scenes? No, no. <laughs> right, okay. They went way too long. Okay, right. I understand it's an action film. Okay. okay. But the thing is, they looked bad. Like, they were they were bad to look at. They they claim all these things about, pra- oh, we do 80% practical effects. And yeah, yeah the 20% CGI sucks ass. And the practical effects don't look good. Mm. So the whole, all the action sequences look quite bad. Here's an interesting thing as well. It's shot not in 24 FPS, which is the standard frames per second that they shoot in. It's shot in much higher. Okay. Yep. What that means is that it looks like a video game when the mm. camera moves around. So you've got bad CGI, you've got bad practical effects, you've got pointless action. Like there's no reason for it to be happening. It's just mindless, constant action mm. with needlessly ugly characters. Yeah. For ages and ages and ages. It's just dumb. The whole thing is just Dumb, pointless, ugly chaos. It's rubbish. Look, I, I don't want to give the game away on a later segment, but uh, this is one of the better films of the franchise. Is it? <laughs> yes, and it is all exactly that. It's so That's bad. a hallmark of this franchise is the just kind of... The plot doesn't really... Who cares about the plot? Okay, In fine. a post-apocalyptic let's, world. Let's abandon a plot. And, and dialogue. It's just, it's just and crash, visuals. I said crash, bang, wallop. That's it. It's yeah. someone having kind of a... a um Non-stop. metallic orgasm yeah a petrol fueled high octane orgasm that's yeah. what it is okay. all, all over your eyes yeah just non-stop pointlessly and yeah. badly done as well it's not even like i would understand if like the practical effects looked good or mm. the cgi looked good i'm not generally a harsh critic of things like this like i generally three will is, just be so convinced three is just just it for was some, ugly three is the worst three is the worst, the worst i've ever done yeah worst that either worst than empire strikes mile. back <laughs> <laughs> which is awful which is, <laughs> which is a bad <laughs> a film. terrible film <laughs> i've just discredited everything three no. three though so but how did was, you, all right talk to me because th- here's something i want to understand our rating system we're still kind of learning what we what we associate a number yeah. with so how did you pluck out three what, yeah what i was just thinking like and um, okay Basically, I was like, is there anything that stops it from being a one? I was like, is there anything at all? And for about 30 minutes, Faye and I were walking home from the cinema trying to come up with reasons. And we genuinely just couldn't, right? Mm. Until I was like, okay, if you really take it as like the perfect target audience, you are somebody who likes like bikes and bondage Mm. outfits and, and just mindless dumb ugly shit. people ugly people like just like if you like that thing yeah. then like, like i guess it would appeal to you mm. but, <laughs> but so like they've kind of they've ticked a box for a certain mm-hmm. taste there's certain sure. a certain like this is what if somebody likes this kind of thing they like just like the, the word i came across was spectacle it's like okay fine i guess yeah. they got spectacle but it i mean like the, it could theoretically have been worse, but he'd have had to have tried. Mm. It was a bad film. The, there was the. I mean, come on, like you don't expect dialogue to be good, no. right? But like, come on, Chris Hemsworth is like the least funny man on the planet. Yeah, he's just like it got tired when he got to Guardians of the Galaxy, and they did the same gag about forty-five minutes straight, and now he's just doing this big dumb brute idiot poor dialogue. Furiosa has. 39 lines in the whole film or something insane mm. so it's like atrocious dialogue did you notice the dubbing was wrong no the, there were near the start especially there were moments where literally the video of them speaking and the right. voice didn't fucking line up sure <laughs> this is a hollywood film <laughs> Right. What are you thinking getting that wrong so you got bad sound you got bad visuals you got bad plot mm. you i mean like I felt bad giving this a three because I was like, this seems generous. <laughs> right. Furious. That's the only thing that's furious about this film yeah, is, maybe, is how I feel after watching yeah, it, after being subjected to two hours of it. You know what? You're so, I'm trying to think, why did I give it a 6.2 then? Um, I was, yeah, probably a bit high on that. <laughs> Okay, because you watch the other films, you get to explore a universe further. Particularly Fury Road, which is tied to, obviously, Furiosa's in Fury Road and and actually seeing some of the mysteries of that film answered. Kind of interesting. Um, I don't... You you know now, having spoken about it with me for a few 
a few kind of series. I uh, I'm a sucker for a built world. Clearly, when when it, when there's an established story and people add new elements to mm. it, for some reason that just that just resonates with yeah, me. It's interesting. And so there were things that were added to this film beyond what was in the originals, particularly um, Immortan Joe's kind of. So Immortan Joe is one of the characters in Fury Road, and he's also a bit of an antagonist in this one. Um, or do, do, would I remember? Could you describe him visually? He's the one with the the mask on his face and the yeah. white long hair. Yeah, I know the one you mean. Yeah. yeah. So his um, his um, establishment, his area, mm-hmm. and some the of citadel. the citadel. That's it. And his followers, I guess. Some of the interesting things about that is built up from Fury Road, and yeah. and it's, it's added to. So I found that kind of interesting. It's the um, intrigue of a prequel. I guess Chris Hemsworth was probably having a bit of fun with it, which was fine. Um, and I just didn't, you know what? For it to start getting below six for me, mm-hmm. I have to feel like someone has taken my time. And I didn't feel, I felt, I felt like yeah. this is fine. You know, what? it's it's not fine because yeah. if it was fine, it'd be 6.5. It's below that. Probably it was in the fives, but I... <laughs> I did watch, I will say this, one thing that helped it massively is I watched the older films <laughs> Yeah, and, then, and I was like, these are better than, better than the older right. films. Yeah. And so that, I think it's all relative, right? So if I'm comparing it to those. That, yeah. That, you that, should be comparing it to like every film though, right? Yeah, of course. Of course. But even then, I think maybe I'm just less of an extreme marker. Yeah. Like for me, yeah. I'm thinking if we're going through every film in history, which we are. Yeah say a 3.0 there's that's there's a one lot of the of, worst one, one of the, of the worst, worst films you, in get, you can get worse on it mm. but but like i mean you'd really have to really try quite hard to yeah. to, to make it worse i think this. okay i think i may have reevaluate how i start to mark them and, and be a bit harsher well i i think that this is another one of those cases where it's it's exactly what you said where it's like you've watched the other four yeah and so you kind of the, there was a I was really excited to kind of piece together the universe, but mm. there were a lot of things where I was like, there is no way they're going to be able to explain this to me. Like, why did they remain in the outback? What's that about? Why not go near the coast where there's like consistent weather and like fishing and just like not having to survive the way they're surviving? Yeah. The, why do one of the many mysteries of this franchise are like the fact that it's clearly set not too far from the apocalypse. Yeah, like it's okay. within recent memory. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And yet people decide to all live in the bush. In like, in like in uninhabitable place and currently. often often people who are living in these uninhabited places like that is a staple of all, all films. Like mm. after the first one it really I mean the first one takes place in the bush but it's more there's more towns involved. Okay. It's just just after the apocalypse and so there's still actually semblance of society still running. It's just getting a bit weird. And then by the second one it's completely all over the place um and in every one they all speak about you know as if there's no yeah you know, there's there's a wasteland and there's no way there's no yeah. <laughs> there's no inhabitable area well you don't and have oceans they all <laughs> they all <laughs> live the through <laughs> they all lived through cities yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah. this happened 20 years ago or 10, <laughs> 10 years ago <laughs> it's all just gone. and they've all just decided to move in the hardest place to oh, live god it's so dumb okay fine so there's no oceans, right? You, the whole world has well, to just be several, a wasteland. In several, in several of these films, they find there are oasises. Oh, right, okay. So <laughs> it was like, oh my God, I've never seen something yeah, like this. Yeah, yeah. It's like, Mad Max was in the police. It's, it's absolutely wild that, the, uh, that they just... They, they, they ha- the one oasis that seems to have survived this environmental apocalypse happens to be in the single most uninhabitable place in the yeah. planet currently. Right. Why is that oasis there? That so that's inexplainable. Mm. I came up with a bit of an explanation as to how they managed to acquire yeah, what on. looked to be about two or three thousand motorcycles at one point. 
Yeah. Which go on, like, what is it? So here's my explanation, right? That for whatever reason they've decided they need to live in the outback. Now sure. you need to be able to cover distances. And so vehicles are incredibly important to survival. Yeah. And so they went around collecting them. And that's the only way I can come up with how this what at one point looks to be an encampment of about hundred people ends up at a different point with CGI being about three thousand motorcycles chasing a single person. Which by the way, what a ridiculous waste of precious fuel. The most bizarre choice out of the whole series is the fact that they went with the reliance on the on gasoline, g- guzzoline they call it, okay. on petrol. So what's that? What's the what's the situation? Okay, so here's the, here's how the apocalypse happened. So the world became over reliant on um, fossil fuels, mm-hmm. particularly oil, and then there was basically a, a nuclear war around the scarcity of this resource. Oil became more important than water. That's the idea. And then the apocalypse happened. You don't really see the apocalypse ever in any of the films. It's referred to and maybe the odd flashback explosion. The apocalypse happens then and then suddenly these kind of gangs start forming and it's formed around this almost chrome, metallic, high octane. Basically everything is around petrol being as important as water as a resource. It starts getting called gasoline. And you just think at some point, people would be like, actually, we don't need cars. Yeah. We need to survive. We need agriculture. <laughs> Literally all the way through. Yeah. It makes no sense. Yeah. And then the more they just get they bigger and bigger. They, waste, they get like the most fuel inefficient vehicles, <laughs> vehicles they've ever can. seen. And like drive the, them for no reason. As you can see in this one. So in in one of the settlements in this film is centered around the production of gas you know uh, uh, not guzzoline basically yeah and that's kind of the closest we've ever got to seeing something like that through throughout the films where yep. there's there's actually a place where they create it makes it okay a bit of world building an bit of world building yeah, yeah. but i've just throughout i keep thinking like why is it yeah it's that's so the choice but it, surely it's like a house of cards this where suddenly someone's like well, i'd rather just have water yeah or weaponry need, yeah right. weaponry as well i mean even then yeah. like bullets would run out yeah or it is a limited resource a a not hurt, you yeah. know grow some wheat so you can feed people so it's like an interesting idea where some guy had like some guy got high and was like you know it'd be really interesting what if we were relying on petrol and then it was a funny thought for, he he smoked. Yeah, and he was he, with that he mate. A, who he takes had him a way mate, too far. A mate, <laughs> a mate who happens to be an Australian director. <laughs> He's like, that's a fucking phenomenal idea. And then, rather than just having one bad film, yeah, they, somehow they everyone five. Had five shit films. What is? What were they thinking? Why are they all dressed like that, friend? Why? Why? You should what? see the first one. He's, they're all dressed in leather. Why? The, the, the police force are all dressed Why? in leather. Why? I don't know. Why? Why are they all wearing stupid chains? And I don't know. I don't it's know. It's just, it must be so hot. And they're all, so they must be boiling you know under those outfits. Immortan Joe has, Immortan Joe basically um, becomes kind of a deity. And this is also not uncommon in the films okay. where they have kind of despotic, um, megalomaniacal leaders mm-hmm. and then people following them. Which, okay, fair enough, in an apocalypse, you would have cult figures rise up. But it's almost like this is happening hundreds of years later. Like, it is yeah. within everyone's lifetime. So, like, why are they all acting this okay, weirdly? So walk me through the timeline here. What's going on with the, with the, with the films? Okay, so, post-apocalypse happens, yep. and the first film, which came out in 79, is set around 1985. Immediately after the so apocalypse. So the apocalypse happens and, and, and at that point, so six years after it's happened, okay. you have the last vestiges of a police force, which is who Mad Max belongs okay. to. And this police force in Australia, anyway, they don't really go outside of Australia in, in scope. This police force, they all wear leather and they all have... Naturally. They all have cars with big engines and, and they go around basically stopping the biker gangs and it's, it's essentially like a biker a gang. sort of wild west with um petrol that's yeah. kind of what and it's leather. like and lots of leather and all the gangs are really weird and they all like 
it's inexplicably not, ugly. All, incredibly ugly and all kind of very sexual. Like they're, yeah. they're all gimpy. Almost. They're very gimpy. They yeah. are gimpy gangs, and the the story is like odd. <laughs> <laughs> it's so it's so odd, right? bad it's one thing that sh- you just think about those cult films of like the 70s and 80s yeah where they're weird for weirdness's sake yeah and then for some reason Pe- this one carried on they got more of them they, they somehow like the first one is so bad like it's, it's such a bad film and you're like why is this why have they made another one why have they? Why have they made any more of these? Why was Why right. was Mel Gibson a famous actor after this? Should have been a career suicide. Yeah, and it ended up being okay. Like so defining film. So onto the onto the timeline. So are they are all five films set in the same universe in the same timeline? Yeah, I, I did a little look into this. Yes. Okay. As far as I can tell, that no yep. one said differently. And then presumably they're not in chronological order because we have a prequel. That's just outside of that, they are so one, two, three, Furiosa. Okay. Then Fury Road. Fury That's Road. How, how the... Which presumably is the big time act road that they do uh, the massive fight sequence on. You'd have thought so. It's not. No. Why the hell is it not? That road is not in it's just another Fury road. road. No. That was it's just a, a road. road. That was just some world building. That was. Yeah, it was oh, <laughs> we, this must we, be the road, road. The, the road. The one good <laughs> thing about this universe. They Look, built a road. Maybe I'm wrong, or maybe it's because they go off road in Fury. <laughs> They should have called it Fury Off Road. <laughs> I don't remember a nice tarmac road. I did watch this quite recently. As you yeah, know. you watched all of them. Thank you for that. I understand the suffering that you're allowed to gone through. It for this. So bad. It like we did this for Planet of the Apes, and I was like, I'm really glad I watched all these yeah, films. I'll do and this I, again. I am glad, in a way, like 20 years from now, I can say to someone, I watched all the Mad Max films, and they go, Oh, really? What do you think? I go, They're shit. They are awful. Do not watch <laughs> They're them. Really bad films. Should you watch? Mad Max Furiosa. Should you watch Furiosa? No. No. Don't watch it. Should you watch any of the Mad Maxes? Spend two hours with your family. Spend two hours. (laughs) Spend two hours. Call call your mum. Spend two hours banging your head against the wall. (laughs) Dude, literally (laughs) anything, (laughs) anything else but go to the cinema and watch this absolute garbage film. No, I I disagree. This one wasn't, yeah, it wasn't that good. (laughs) <laughs> but it wasn't like okay can we we're, we're 20 odd minutes in can we okay, go into sure. spoilers gut reaction because i feel like we need a little bit of that before you know before the critics sure sure i'm happy so okay. spoilers from now on one of the biggest moments i hated right <laughs> biggest moment i absolutely hated this and there are a few right okay another interesting setup coming up Ooh, this could be interesting okay. chris hemsworth's team they are setting up an ambush okay they're gonna make it look like gas town is on fire so that the Uh, Our team, Furiosa team, goes to fight them over there and they've left the Citadel unprotected. Great. But they know that that's an ambush. So then they set up an ambush for Chris Hemsworth. Oh, this is going to be cool. We're going to have a really cool battle where where different plots and plans all come to a head. What happens, Fred? They do like... Dumb overlays and exposition and don't even show you the battle. Yeah, yeah. They literally, they just start talking and then do like the tackiest, worst overlays I've ever seen in my life. I could, the film is so bad. I couldn't even tell that the 40 day war had happened because it's just, it's just mess the whole time. Yeah, that completely passed me by. That whole sequence just it meant just, nothing to me. You, I was just you like, saying what the hell that is you, going you on? Just going right there. And this is something that I wanted to point out. with Fu- So Fury Road, when it came out, which is the one before this, which you haven't seen. Yeah. That came out to a lot of fanfare. Fanfare. So thoroughfare, you know, it came out and it was well received. Okay. And it was a very big film. It was like the blockbuster of 20, yeah, I remember 2015, it. I remember maybe. It now, yeah. And so it was essentially 30 years removed from the last one that came out okay. in 1985. Big reboot. Tom Hardy's in it kind of reimagining but an extension of what was happening before which is essentially like a, a monster of the week it's like an episode format um with mad max going trying to save someone so that comes out and i remember thinking okay i'm really excited to watch this and went to it and was like okay i i enjoyed it because people told me how much i needed to enjoy this yeah but the more i thought back on it the more i realized like I didn't really enjoy it that much of the time. I was just being easily led. And also, it was so unmemorable. (laughs) 
Like I couldn't. I, I rewatched Fury Road as you know recently, and I was yeah. like, I fucking had no idea any of this. <laughs> any of it's this literally happened. a drive. <laughs> yeah. And that happens in every film. And I knew going into Furiosa, I was like, I'm going to have the exact same thing where I will have no clue what happened in the plot immediately yeah. after. You've just told me about a sequence. which I just watched this film. <laughs> I watched this film like I don't yesterday. remember it. <laughs> and you were like, this 40-day war. And I was like, oh yeah, they did mention they, something about that. That's supposed to be like the climax of the, the film. The climax they of the film. Over it. Everything, all the politics comes to this moment. Furiosa yeah. escapes from the jaws of death, mm. goes back, tells them about this thing. They're going to set up a counter ambush. Great. And then they're god awful editing. Do you know about the editing? Do you know anything about this? Right. The editing is garbage okay? okay the dubbing doesn't match right there's this dumb overlay instead yep. there we've got they have recorded thousands and thousands and thousands of hours for right. this film right and they chose these two hours right the editor did right the 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 battle the counter ambush battle the climax of the movie we don't see it they mm -hmm. just do these tacky overlays that yep. you could do on cap cut in about 20 minutes yep. it's awful right the editor is george miller's wife and mad max fury road is the first film she ever edited right. and when asked why she did it she said oh well it's because if you got one of these guys who do the editing for the other action movies then it would look like every other action movie right yeah, but yours looks like shit. Yours looks terrible. <laughs> it's so bad. Yeah, yeah. What is she doing? Yeah. Why it, would you why would you employ somebody who doesn't know how to edit? Her interpretation of not being every other action movie is to have no action N in the movie during the set piece. Oh. It was yeah, it was really uh yeah, it was really bad. I never notice editing. Editing's not something I notice until we no. were sat in this film and Faye, who also doesn't notice editing, when uh, what the hell was with those overlays? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, not only bad overlays, but bad overlays at the climax of the movie instead of the battle. So explain to me what an overlay is. It's when, you know, at the start of Apocalypse Now, you've got like, um, you've got two shots and you can kind of see one over the top yeah, of okay. the other. And it's like, shows a kind of montage sequence where right. you're kind of, you're seeing a few different scenes going off because there's not enough chaos in Mad Max, as it No, is. no, no. No, like one shot doesn't have way too much going on anyway. What you need is multiple shots with too much going on over the top of each other because this is the climax of the film. And we want to make sure that if you weren't confused before, you bloody well are now. Mm. This whole movie is just a confusing garbage mess. I hated it. I was so angry afterwards. I was like, I need to vent this off. I need to record this episode now. Because every time I tried to think about how I felt about this movie, I just spiraled into an angry rant. When, whenever I come over to yours and Faye's still here and she says to me, I'm looking forward to hearing what you say about this one. I immediately know that you guys both hate it. Really? Yeah. Because if it's a good one, she <laughs> won't say, she won't <laughs> say anything. She'll just see like, oh, you're recording an episode, are you? <laughs> but if, if, if it's a bad one, she'll be like, I'm looking forward to hearing what you say about this one. I was, I, I'm with her as well. I was like, I really hope that Fred loved this movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I, I'm questioning what I gave it, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. Was, was there anything oh. redeeming on it? That's yeah, it. that's what I was just about to ask you, Fred. As somebody who gave it such a high score, highs, yeah, six point two, six point two, undeservedly high. <laughs> yeah. What What were some bits that weren't well building mm. that were redeeming about it? Right. Okay. So we can go through the plot here. So I've already explained. The premise up to when she's kidnapped and taken by Chris Hemsworth. All right, some of the some of the action s sequences were all right. Like when the the mum's chasing her, I did think literally during. <laughs> all right, the mum's chasing her. So she gets kidnapped, and she's they're going to take her back to Chris Hemsworth, who's at another little establishment. Um, that you know, far off into the desert. So the people from the green place need to stop them. They need to be like they can't know about this yeah. this oasis that's in the middle of the desert because because no one's we found it yet. We don't want to share with people who are starting. To yeah, exactly. No, no, no. Uh, could do a reading some Marxism, really. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> let's get political here. <laughs> um, um, so <laughs> those aren't my views. So <laughs> I I, uh, I thought that the actual chase sequence was fine. I thought it was all right. Um, yeah. Then. Yeah. I remember thinking after she, her mum gets killed by Chris Hemsworth's character and I was like, yeah, this is fine. It's kind of dumb. 
but the whole series is so dumb. Yeah. And some like we didn't really know about the green place from Fury Road because in Fury Road it don't make any sense. <laughs> well, in Fury Road, they're they're on a road to get really? back to, to get back to the green place because she basically steals all the wives. So they acknowledge that it exists. In Fury Road, you don't see the green place. But they but they're it, trying but to they get know there. it's there. Okay. That's why they're trying to get. So she Furiosa is basically the lead kind of um driver of the war rig which is the, yep. the, the thing that her and her, her kind of the big tanker that carries yeah all her and her like kind of lover friend another bad part of the movie yeah. guy <laughs> yeah that they drive she becomes immortal joe's like driver basically to get all the gasoline the guzzoline or food or yeah to do the exchanges so she's like a big part of the citadel yeah obviously by this point when we see her in Fury Road, which is a few years down the line. And in Fury Road, what she does is she kidnaps or sets free all of Immortal Joe's wives. So all of the wives yeah. that she was going to be one of, yeah, she basically hides them in the war rig when they're going out one time. We see that at the end. And we see it at the end, yeah. So And then that the whole plot of Fury Road is her basically going off and taking a turn to go to the green place. Right. And taking these wars with it. And then they get chased by basically Immortal Joe's whole army. So this was one of the things that I hated that I wondered if it could be explained was the ending. Yeah, what did that mean? Yeah, like, as in, it, it would have helped, like, the whole, But the whole movie was, the premise of the movie, from the trailer, from the start, the whole premise was Furiosa wants to go home. You know, that's it. Furiosa needs to go home. That's yeah. right. Which, by the way, this is a... She had... Several a lot of opportunities to leave it like for multiple, her entire teen years multiple. could have just taken a car and left yeah yeah it made very little sense no sense at all and she also like why did she go back why did she go back when her mum killed died to save her right at the start so she had a, a chance to go home then because her mum yeah, yeah. her mum sacrificed herself so that <laughs> shoot well, Furiosa's mum sacrifices herself to let Furiosa escape and Furiosa goes back I think that one's fair enough. Okay, fine. So that's opportunity number one, right? Yeah. I'll skip forward to opportunity 17, right? <laughs> <laughs> She's now in her 20s or whatever. Yeah. She's had access to weaponry, to transport. She's had full access to the facilities for years. She's had no reason to hang about for this long. Mm. She could have gone back at any one of those points. Yeah, and that's her whole, her whole character driving force is to get home yeah and and she just even when she escapes she escapes his like lair do you remember when she she was supposed to be immortal joe's oh yeah wives when she escapes there by shaving her head off yeah and getting away from his big son then she just decides to join the mechanic team yeah Rather than use that just, as an opportunity, go home. Like, we know there's precedence for people leaving because we saw the albino who left at the start. Yeah, and she's much smarter than him. Yeah, she could 100 percent get herself some sort of just a vehicle, some vehicle. There are literally thousands, like if she, of motorcycles. So the long, I guess that she's playing the whole long con for no reason of getting, but she, but they don't say why. No. <laughs> like, they just say, oh no, she's gonna no, hang she's about gonna for 20 hang years, about, <laughs> learn the trade. And then, but always hide that she doesn't have a penis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the thing that gives it away is that she doesn't cut her hair and it and it grows long. Yeah, like yeah, that was that, the, that was point. a moment where the fact she Actually, was a woman was, was given it. away. That's it. I liked that whole sequence. I liked that fight sequence with the one that the lasted one where, about fifteen minutes. Yeah, the one where him and her end up becoming a team basically. Yeah, okay. that was pretty fun. Although he, as a character, was literally the most shoehorned. He's what? the yeah, literally the first scene he's in, he Not literally walks very, in and yeah. they go, He's the guy. He's the guy who's good at <laughs> driving the war rig, and everyone's like, Ooh, oh. and then he's literally, All right, we're going on a drive. <laughs> he surely could have built him up. I'm just a driver. <laughs> <laughs> and and we <laughs> he, he they they get through that big scrape, that massive fight sequence, which I will say, in my opinion, was good. I enjoyed that sequence. Okay. They get through it. She tries to kill him, but he manages to kind of one-up her and kicks her out. Mm -hmm. He drives off. And then he turns around, stops, comes back, walks back. Yeah, 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 Pointless, yeah, yeah. whatever. 
and that whole scene where he's just like if I've learned one thing today, it's that me and you <laughs> need to be a partnership. It's like, what? Where'd you get that from, you fucking idiot? Like, all right, fine. If you're going to be like that, <laughs> did you have to do the cheesy drive all the way up the road and walk <laughs> over back? the He saw the hum and was, I'll get over that. And then, and then I'll walk She back. literally just tried to shoot him in the head. <laughs> <laughs> it's so dumb. There's more dumb stuff as well. It's just dumb from start to finish. Dumb, dumb. Okay, and um, there was actually we we talked about bringing sp- questions for yeah. interest, right? Which I've got one which stems perfectly off of this. Sure. So before I do, let's just summarize. Is there any scenario in which you should watch Furiosa? Um, right. If you enjoyed Fury Road. Which I know you didn't watch. If you really enjoyed Fury Road, it's a perfectly fine follow-up. Where you you probably enjoyed Fury Road for the ridiculousness of it. You're not in it for the plot. Mm-hmm. Spectacle maybe, as you say, is slightly worse. But I didn't really notice the editing that badly. Um, and you answer some of the mysteries that aren't that interesting from Fury Road. But there's still, I guess, mysteries. Yeah. Uh, as to like the green place and and her backstory, how she got her arm chopped off. So, yeah. <laughs> if you really liked Fury Road, okay, you'll probably. But for everybody else like on the it. entire planet, don't watch this. Do film. not waste your time. Don't waste your time. Please, just, just go to the gym. Like, just do anything. Work else. on yourself. Work on you. because don't work on yourself. People don't I like don't you. Care. Just yeah. don't make yourself worse listen, by listen, sitting through this. Isn't it, Kings? <laughs> don't, don't watch this fucking dog shit film. Go, go, go and lay some weight. Read a fucking book. You do, virgin. Do anything. Do anything. Watch watch mate night content. Yeah, for sure. I I, I think look. No, it's not very good. Um, it's a terrible you film. Don't, don't watch this. Um, okay, so question. 